I'm Dee, coming to you from the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex in the building devoted to our heroes and legends of the early space program, including Project Mercury and Project Gemini. Both of those programs were to test whether or not human beings could live and work in space as we were getting ready to go to the moon. The early capsules all used a very similar landing design, which was a parachute to soften the landing as we splashed down into the ocean. This is the same design that we're going to return to for our newest space program, which uses the Orion capsule, again using parachutes and an ocean splashdown to soften the landing for our astronauts. Today, we are going to investigate the science that is involved in landing with a parachute. And you're going to build your own parachute and test it. I'm calling this a spacecraft instead of a spacecraft because our spacecraft is actually going to be a plastic egg. And this is a great time of year for you to find these. You probably already have a few lying around at home. But the plastic egg is very lightweight. So the first thing we're going to do is make it a little bit heavier by putting some weights, you can use washers, I'm using pennies, and I'm just going to put the weights in there. And if you have an egg that doesn't snap closed tightly, if you'd like, you can put a little piece of tape around it, just to make sure that it doesn't break open. Our goal is to have this land this way, not sideways, not upside down, because all of our original space capsules were designed with a heat shield on the bottom, and it was very important that they enter the atmosphere heat shield first, then the parachute would deploy and slow them down enough to land in the ocean. Without that parachute, hitting the water would have been like hitting a solid surface. It would have been very bad for the astronauts on board. But the parachutes provided enough drag due to the air friction that it was able to comfort that landing. So we are going to use regular household products. I had an old picnic tablecloth you can use cloth, you can use tissue paper, old wrapping paper, cut up a little bit of tablecloth. Just make sure that whatever fabric you choose, you have your parents' permission to cut it. I'm going to want a round shape for my parachute. So the easiest way to make this round is to fold it in half, fold it in half again, fold it into a triangle, do that one more time. The more times you do this, the easier it is, but I usually find that's enough once you get that cone shape. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut the end of this off like so. You can curve it a little bit or you can cut straight across. It doesn't make a big difference. Then when I open this up, it's a nice round shape. And the reason that I like it round is because I want to space my strings around evenly. If you have a square, you really have strings in the corner, that's pretty good, but the more strings you have, actually, the better this seems to work. Now, for strings, you can use all sorts of things. I've got one that I've made here using fishing line. That's a little bit hard to tie the knots on, so you might want to use something like kite string or thread or whatever kind of string that you have at home. And what you're going to do is you're going to cut in my case, eight pieces of string, or actually, the easiest way to do this is to cut four pieces of string and fold them in half. The important thing is I want them all the same length. So once I've selected this as my length of string, I'm going to measure using this, and as I unravel it, I'm gonna just make sure that it's the same length. Now, I'm not telling you how long this is because what makes this an interesting science project, or engineering design challenge if you prefer, is to vary the length of string and see which one's actually going to give you the better result. With your parachute, the size of your parachute is going to either increase or decrease the total surface area, and the more surface area you have, the more drag it will provide, and that should provide a softer landing. Now, I'm not going to cut all of the strings right now just for time's sake, but I will need four of these. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it, I'm going to fold it in half, and then just to keep it the same length, I'm going to tie a little knot in one end. And what that's going to do is that's going to make a little bit of a loop there. 
and that'll hold it in place. And I'm going to put this open into two strings, and I'm going to put one at the end. And if you want, if you have like a little piece of tape or something, you want to tape that temporarily just to hold it in place, that's fine. But I'm going to do this with all of my strings until I have them evenly spaced around the edges. So I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Once I have all of those, I'm going to gather up those ends where I had the loop, and I'm going to fasten these to my egg. Now, one way you could do it is with a rubber band. This egg I've already used, there are some holes in the top. Most of the plastic eggs you find will have holes in them, and I've just threaded this rubber band through, and then I would just tie my strings to the rubber band. The important thing is to make sure that they are all of equal length. If you prefer not to use a rubber band, you can just tie these strings directly to the egg. And again, try different ways to see what works best for you. Once you have this all finished, it's going to look something like this. So I've got my parachute, I've got my strings. In this case, I did hook them up to a rubber band and to my egg. This egg I did tape shut just to be on the safe side. We're going to take this outside and drop it to see how well it lands. The goal is to have it spend a lot of time in the air before it hits the ground. The longer it stays airborne, the softer the landing will be. So let's go outside and see how well this flies. So when it's time to drop your parachute, there are a few different ways you can do it. I'm doing mine from a ramp so that all I have to do is drop it straight down. If you have an upper story balcony or a window or a roof that's safe to go onto with your parents permission and supervision, then you can drop that way. If you don't, you can still use, test your parachute from the ground by balling it up and throwing it up as hard as you can and then watching it come back down. Give it a try at home and share your results with us. Take a picture or a video and post it in the comments so we can see how you've solved this engineering design challenge. This is Dee from Kennedy Space Center reminding you to keep looking up.